for another day another upgrade it kind of is an upgrade it kind of isn't basically they had two boards here we're leaving the top one for a second but the bottom one has got all the power circuits sockets all that sort of stuff and they had a load of these bad boys so they just had a front end it basically had a front end rcd and then just a load of breakers but the problem they were having is that kept on tripping and it wasn't actually a fault with the rcd it's just literally the amount of stuff they've got plugged in because everything has a little bit of leakage you know when you think everything has like maybe one two milliamps of leakage where you've only got to plug in you know 10 or so items and you could effectively reach the point where the rcd trips so what we're doing is we're bidding all of these and i'm just putting in the new wilex mini trips or mini RCBOs, I should say. We have a ferrule kit, which I should be demonstrating. They're awesome, actually, I really like them. Tough book to do my certificate on at the very end. Right, let's play the fun family game. Where shall Tom mount the camera today? Place your bets now. Oh yeah, <laughs> YouTube, it's not that hard. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I need like a tiny stool or something to sit on. I have a bit of my montana beef jerky so i'm actually not going to bother upgrading the board itself because there's no need it's a metal board with a metal cover there's no real need to do it otherwise you're just creating work for yourself and you just you don't need to you know so i picked these breakers up this morning it's always a bit of a battle trying to get a board to look relatively neat after you've finished with it i had to ask a customer a second ago i was like do you mind if i record myself in this cupboard he was like you what i think he thought it was very odd i was like i've got to ask I can't just record and not say anything. I think he found it rather amusing, actually. This guy here played, he played a character in uh, The Crown. You know The Crown on Netflix? This guy was one of the, he was one of the main characters in it. I can't say who, but nice fella. I like him, nice guy. I feel I may become the hunchback in a minute. All right, so we've got our RCBO in. Let's test these rings. Make sure we've got continuity. Okay, if I prop this here, you can follow it with me. Okay, so as I've said in the past, we'll take our test leads back to back like that. No, wrong one. That's it. Nulled. Okay. Done. So we'll do live first. 1.08. All right, so I shall write that on the ticket now. So neutral should be the same as live. 1.08 again. Fabulous. All right, test the next one. Yeah, when you're retrofitting boards and stuff, <clears throat> especially if you're retrofitting the breakers, trying to do it neatly is a proper faff. If you're doing it from scratch, you can you can cut everything to length and stuff. It's one of the reasons I didn't want to take this board off because you'll end up getting another board and the, the cables won't be long enough to reach inside that board because the main switch will be on the other side or, you know, something or other. So that's why I just retrofitted and put new Wilex RCBOs in. These neutrals have all got to go into the breakers as they go along, but I'm just trying to, trying to sort of neatly put these in. I'll show you this ferrule kit now, actually. Let me show you that because it's very, it's very neat. So what you do, you take your RCBO, we cut the zip tie. I'll just move the light because I'm not sure if this is a better position or a worse position. And we slot that into the board. I'm going to cut the flex, strip our cable, then we'll take our little crimps. Now I find for the fly leads, these grey ones are the perfect size, they fit like a glove. So you just twist it like that to get it as smooth as possible. Take your crimp. That sits on there like that. And then you just take your crimpers. You can buy these crimpers for, you can buy a good pair for 50 quid. Less than that actually, even 40 quid. And you just slide it on. And that's it, done. And your crimp is on. And that's basically the finished result, but it gives you a really neat finish on a stranded conductor. And that just sits in there with the others like so and that gives you sort of a nice neat you know a neat way of connecting them up and you're not putting undue pressure on the on the strands you know i've got a feeling there's a reg somewhere actually that says you're supposed to you're supposed to use ferrules on stranded cables but i'm actually not 100 percent sure i thought there was make sure we're nulled we are okay let's test this ring what have we got 0.78 no 0.78 Times by 1.68. Oh, 
Right. We should get 1.31 on the Earth conductor, theoretically. It's 1.23, slightly lower, but that is within. There's a certain amount of tolerance I allow when I'm doing testing, like when I'm testing the rings and stuff, and you, you, tend, to, you tend to get a vibe of when something's not right, rather than just following the Say, uh, say the words rather than just following the book, but you tend to get a vibe. You know, when you're testing, you can just feel that you get the feedback from the meter and you just get a feeling whether something's not testing out right. I'm still using those uh, snips, the multi-snips. They came from a subscriber. I can't remember who the subscriber was now, but they are, uh, this is where I use them for stuff like this, poking in around fuse boards, because they're very handy for that. Okay, next circuit. That would be the upstairs sockets. I'm going to fit that on a 20 amp RCBO because I don't personally feel the need to fit like upstairs sockets and stuff on 32s anymore. I don't feel the need for it. In my opinion, I just think it's unnecessary. There are still some sparks who fit stuff, you know, they just fit an upstairs ring, downstairs ring, kitchen ring, and they put it all on 32s. You can do. I mean, there's no rule that says you can't. I just don't think upstairs, you know, like loft sockets, upstairs sockets, I don't think they need to be on a 32 amp breaker anymore. You know, everything we do now is getting more and more efficient to the point where it just, it negates the need to have it. There's just no real need anymore. You know, kettles, hoovers, everything, the, the efficiency of them is coming down, down, down. The need for a 32 amp breaker is kind of, it's just not really needed, you know, in my opinion, I don't think it is. Things like ground floor sockets or like kitchen, I'll still keep on, you uh, know, I'll keep those on a 32, but for like upstairs sockets, I just don't see the need for it. I think it just I'm one of those lovers of keep the circuit as keep the rating of the circuit absolutely as low as you can, but not too low that it causes inconvenience to the user. You know, I do like this little crimping tool. That's definitely the way to do fly leads on RCBOs, 100%. I gotta do something about these six nils. They're just fucking winding me up. I know no one's ever gonna see it, but one thing that's worked ryan from cities no worries mate cool cheers ryan one thing i was about to say once you've turned the main switch off that terminal is still live obviously but the rest of the board is dead but once you turn that main switch off leave all your breakers on and then just do a voltage test between live to earth and neutral just do your test again just to check you're not getting a back feed from somewhere because I've had that before. Just because you turn that switch off, that doesn't mean that this is all dead. You could still be getting a back feed from some, I don't know, you could still be potentially getting a back feed. So it's worth just doing a quick test. Just because that's off, just, I'm just saying to test anyway. It doesn't hurt to do it. But yeah, just because the main switch is off, just test anyway before you start work. Right. Last ring, let's test our lives. I'll go through it with you actually. Test our lives, 0.68. Test our neutrals, we should get roughly the same, 0.65, okay. And the Earths, in fact, we can calculate that, say 0.65, that was the lowest reading, times that by 1.67. We should get just over one ohm, 1.1 ohms, 1.2 ohms, okay. I'd say that's acceptable. So I shall mark that down on my ticket. The whole tough book thing, people were saying, why do you bother writing the tickets out as you go? Why don't you just, why don't you just scribble it down? You know, the main results, scribble it down, take it home, and then you've got a bit more time, you know, at home to write them out. Uh, the main reason I don't do it that way is because you just lose the results. So it takes me a bit longer now, and it does, to go to start writing a certificate out now does t it takes longer there's no way of getting around it to do the whole certificate on site as you go it is time it's a very time intensive task but i mean we've all been there you know where you've written all the results down on a bit of cardboard or something you've hopped in the van and you've thrown that piece of cardboard down and then you've got to come back to the site to retest everything or you just fudge the results and we've all been there you know uh, me included so please let's not lie to each other over it we've all been there in that position uh, what decision you pick obviously that's up to you but uh, so that's the main reason I write them out on a on a laptop, just because it's uh, it's a more thorough way of doing it. It takes you longer, but it's a more thorough, yeah, you know, it's a better approach, I think. Does anybody else do that? You <laughs> just drop your screwdriver. Oh yeah, that cherry picker. There were numerous people saying, don't get one there. Why would you want one? Just hire one. A, because I hate hiring stuff. Hiring is just dead money when you hire tools, equipment, anything. And as silly as it sounds, even though it's like 30 grand, I'd rather buy it than hire 
half these EICRs for these, you know, this thing that's happening where we've got to have EICRs on tenanted properties. It's a waste of time. I've lost so many EICRs in the last two months because there's just people doing them for like a hundred quid all in, you know, because the reality is no one gives a fuck about them. They just want that. They just want the piece of paper. They don't give a fuck about the state of the electrics in the home. And that is the sad truth. In fact, I got an email, a company approached me saying, do you want to do uh, EICRs for us? And I said, yeah, all right. What sort of figures are we talking? Uh, for a three bedroom house, so there's no that, there's no guarantee of how many circuits, there could be 20 circuits in that house, 100 quid, including that, fucking robbery, absolute robbery. So of course the way to make the money is you have to do sort of two a day to get a grand a week, you know, you've got to, can't be done. Then you just know those results, whoever does do those sort of type of tickets, they're just going to fudge the results because you can't, I mean look at this, even to test this board, you know, the amount of you heard me earlier saying to the client it's going to take me a couple of hours after i switch it on because i've still got to test everything but you just know half these contractors for that sort of money they're just going to be fudging the test results there's just no way or they'll be issuing visual inspections and they i mean you might as well take that visual inspection certificate turn it into a paper airplane and throw it at the sun for as little use as it is you know it's <laughs> that's how I see it. Uh, but yeah, the other reason with the cherry picker is because I'll be using one pretty much full time shortly. Well, next couple of months. I mean, I know they're expensive. You've got Lola tickets, you've got six weekly inspections, and they are just, the, as vehicles go, they are just more expensive. You've got, you know, even little things like they've got six wheels instead of four. And more more maintenance, more, you know, the cost of maintenance is higher on them. So I get it, you know, but doesn't change the fact I've got to get one, you know, it's just, you know, all of those costs, you just put them on your bill. I got to meet these earths up first. This is making me twitch. A few moments later. I've just realized I've got to put metal blanks in because it's got one of these uh, plastic fronts. I've got some on the van actually. I'm gonna get them in a minute, finish labeling this up. How is everybody finding work at the moment? How are you all managing? I'd be interested to hear your feedback. How are you coping with work? How are you finding it? Because it's a funny climate, you know? I'd be interested to see or hear. I'd be interested to know. Leave it below. How are you coping at the moment, work-wise? It's reasonably busy here. You know, there's enough to get on with. A lot of the, domest the domestics, I mean, a lot of the domestic stuff stopped. I'm doing domestic here, but a lot of it has stopped. Most of it is commercial at the moment. I've got that job down in Canary Wharf over at Borstal. That's school. I've got that I'm doing. Uh, I've got a lot of tenders out at the moment, a lot of quotes, which I'm just waiting to hear back from and stuff. But they should come in, I'm reasonably confident. So the work is still there, it's just... It's just moved around, if that makes any sense. Oh, and also, don't buy the Amazon Basic batteries. They're utter junk. The Amazon Basics alkaline batteries, they're proper... They're crap, don't buy them. There's a reason you buy a pack of 100 for like 15 quid. As usual, I got sucked into the hole by bulk and it didn't pay off. I normally keep one or two of the old spare breakers because you never know when they come in handy, you know. It's quite nice actually, put a din rail in your van. You can just snap them on and take them off as you please then. To give you a gauge, this job, just to replace, I had to replace eight, eight MCBs. Just take the MCBs out and just replace it with an RCBO. I was unpacking the van at quarter to nine and it's now coming on four o'clock i know people go on about this whole thing of you know oh you charge the earth you're excessive it's not to just change those breakers out and test every circuit properly write the certificate out fully email it to the client that's <laughs> seven hours you wouldn't an hour a circuit is that's a good if you include you know loading and unloading and all that sort of stuff yeah that's almost just an hour of circuit to swap the breaker out test it do the paperwork for every circuit i mean i had lunch half an hour so you've got to deduct that right i now have a new gadget i have to find a home for i can go down here this whole thing of pricing jobs cheap just to get them it's just a road to nowhere it really is you know just this in bits i had to pick up eight rcbo's metal blanks labels and all the bits that you know yeah, all the other bits and pieces that go with it and that was Almost 300 quid, you know? It's expensive, like. All right, that can go in the front of the van. That is awesome, by the way. This power bank. 
I don't normally, when people send products, I don't normally review them as such. I don't do dedicated videos because that's just not the way I want to do it. Um, but that is, it's bloody heavy, but it is particularly good. I will talk about it a bit more in a video coming up, but so far, I don't review them straight away because I like to use them for a couple of weeks myself, see what they're like, and then I can tell you whether they're good or whether they're cack, you know? But so far, it seems really good. I use it for when I'm doing the board change and the customer can, they can plug in. You can plug the router in, you know, Wi-Fi. They can run the kettle, you know, put a little kettle, a little, you know, 1500 watt kettle or something. You know, they can at least keep on working, laptops and all that. I haven't got a home for me glue guns. It annoys me leaving them there. I've got a holder on the back of this door like on this door but this is for the wipes and stuff but I have got one just for glues and the guns but I've ordered a checker plate for this door because I had the checker plate I cut the checker plate in for that door so that's done I did the floor that's done but this side I ordered two she I ordered four sheets for both vans so I ordered a 600 600 sheet but I ordered four of them because I figured that door is going to be the same as that door but it isn't that one is 700 by 700 so i've got two sheets of six per six sitting in the back of the other van not doing anything so so as soon as that one turns up i can mount all the glue guns and that can then go on there just trying to maximize as much just make as much space as i can you know anyway give me two minutes let me pack up and i've got to invoice the client i'll see you in a sec it's yeah. not it's that i know everyone's gonna take the piss out of my shorts oh no really my little chicken drumsticks you can't see them down there you can see them down here we do have stickers actually now. Can I have one? <laughs> what do you mean? You're driving around with that on the side of the van. You don't... If you want one to put on, I don't know, if you want one, you're going to put have... it on my bedroom door. <laughs> yeah, you can have <laughs> six. Yeah, baby. Sorry, Tom, can I just have a bit more length? Thank you. A bit more length. I do. You don't help me. You set yourself up for fucking innuendos as well. It's not yeah, just me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Blame you're that the, woman. You are the instigator of it. I am the And bad. everybody thinks, well, mind, everyone thinks I am. Oh, come on. I'm actually fine to take it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, <laughs> sure you are.